Okay guys, so a really quick lesson today on different types of sequences. Um, we're talking about increasing, decreasing and periodic sequences. This is pretty obvious about what a sequence might be. So it says a, sequ a sequence is strictly increasing if the terms are always increasing. So if the next term in the sequence is bigger than the previous term in the sequence for all values of n, n being a natural number of just all of the integers, um, so if you have 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, then this is a strictly increasing sequence. The reason it's called strictly increasing, which you might learn at university, is an increasing sequence can actually be something that looks like this. There can be things that it's either it's either staying the same or going up. That's what we would call increasing. So strictly increasing means that it is always going up. However, um, the textbook cause them both increasing. So you can you can just stick with calling it increasing. It is decreasing if the next term is smaller than the previous term. For example, a sequence that maybe goes like this, pretty obvious. This is a decreasing sequence. And a sequence is periodic if the terms repeat in a cycle. The order, k, of a sequence is how often it repeats. So if un plus k is equal to un for all n, then that means it's periodic. So, for example, here is u1 and here is u4. So we've said that u1 is equal to u4. So this one is periodic and has a period of three because it repeats itself every... There, is, there are three numbers in, the, in that sequence before it starts repeating itself. So you've got increasing, decreasing, and periodic. This is just some extra language that you might need to know about here. So first of all, um, state whether the sequence is increasing, decreasing, or periodic. So to find the next number in the sequence, you take the previous one and you add on 3. The first one is 7. So it starts with a 7, then you add on 3 to that one to get the next one, which is just 10. You add on a 3 again, you add on another 3. So pretty obviously, this is an increasing, and in fact it's a strictly increasing sequence. So don't need to say anything about the period of it here. Now, this one, to find the next term, you take the previous term and you square it. So the first one is a half. If you square that, you get a quarter. If you square that, you get a sixteenth. If you square that, you look to your calculator to remind yourself that 16 squared is 256. And you can see that each time these numbers are decreasing. So it's a geometric sequence. Mm, no, it's not a geometric sequence. Ignore me. And this is everything is getting smaller each time. So we would say this is strictly decreasing. And then for this one that we've got here, um, let's just sub in some values. So to find out u of n plus 1, you do sine of 90 degrees of n. So that must mean the first one is just the sine of 90, because you're saying that n is 1. Um, is that right? So if n is, if we're trying to find out n is 1, sorry. So if we're trying to find out when n is uh, u1, u1 is when n is 0. So you would be doing the sine of 0, and the sine of 0 is 0. Now, the next one, to find out what u2 is, u2 would be when n is 1. So it's the sine of 90, and the sine of 90 is 1. u3 would be when n is 2, so that's the sine of 180. If you think about a sine graph, the sine of 180 is 0. Oh, it looks like it's going to repeat um, that quickly, so it could be of period 2, but we better keep going. u4 would be when n is 3. So it would be sine of 270. Ah, oh, it's actually minus 1, so it hasn't started repeating yet. And then u5, you can see what's going to happen here, would be when it's sine of 360, which is 0. So we've gone 0, 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 1, 0, minus 1. So we can actually see that the sequence is 0, 1, 0, minus 1. And then we know after that it's going to be 0, 1, 0, minus 1. So it's repeating every four, which means then that the order of this periodic sequence, so we would say it's periodic and it has order four because it repeats with four numbers within its particular sequence. Okay, so I'm going to stop there because um, exercise 3H is really short. However, exercise 3I is quite um, a bit trickier and I've got some exam questions that go with it. Okay.